I'm great. Who's that little princess? Hi, how are you? Hi. <laughs> That's my niece, Reina. Oh, okay. That's my sister's baby. So they're in LA now? From Arizona, yes. Ah, okay. Wow. How are you then? Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, Melissa will not be joining us today. Okay. Well, we'll lift her up in prayer. Hello, Anson. How are you? Hi. I'm doing well. Good to see you. How's your week been? My week's been busy, <laughs> but lots of good stuff. Yeah. All right. Very well. Uh, I'll spark. <laughs> All right. Any questions for me? Anything whatsoever? Anybody wave? Uh, I said. Anything at all? Anything oh. anybody want to manifest? Anything at all? If not. Um, I just uh, sometimes when I when I look at people, right, and they told me their stories, sometimes I would think in my mind that um, whatever is happening to them, um, it's because they did something that is not that was not right before. So they're just going through so-called suffering the yeah. consequences. Right. Right. But is that is that necessary or do I just ignore? Um you see it on other people? Uh-huh. When you see it on other people, remember I always say you can't change people, you can't change the world. So when we see them, you have to see them in a place of not suffering, but their own experience. And they have to see you as a place of savior. Yeah, okay. So you, uh, don't, really, you don't really have to say words to influence that person. Uh, okay, so this is the thing that is in my mind. Uh, I don't tell them, but when I see them, you know, I. I, in my mind, I said, well, this is what you get if you don't work hard. Um, <laughs> but I will tell them that, you know, you should work harder. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to do uh, more homework, you know, more studying so that you understand whatever you're learning, right? right. But I cannot help it that in my mind, the first thought that came in, so why do you get what you deserve? Because you, you, you were lazy. You're just lazy. <laughs> And then I have to stop myself, like, you know, oh, stop it. Right. And that's a, and honestly, that's a normal thinking sometimes. Because sometimes I'll say, why come you don't get it? You've been with me years and years and years and you relapsed. Or, and then I have to say, you know what? It's okay for them. Because it's their, it's their experience that they're choosing to experience. And I have to be okay with that because my role in them is to influence. And the reason why is because we called each other into our experience. In other words, you don't want to see them suffering, so you want to see them wake up. So you gave them the perfect words, but then you don't see any change. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. But then you have to understand, because you gave them that, and even though you don't see the change, you planted the seed. So they'll carry that seed somewhere else and that seed will grow and it might take somebody else to come say almost something similar to what you said or exactly what you said to that person and they'll go, oh my God, you're the best teacher in the whole world. And then they'll come and repeat it and you go, I already told you that. Yeah. And that's just the cycle. And you have to say, that's okay. That's their experience. That's their journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't really see them in suffering because as soon as I see them in suffering, I've judged them. Yeah. Well, I don't see that as suffering. I'm just saying that it's just a simple solution. Uh, everybody knows that if you don't study, you don't do your assignment, you will not pass. Right. But then a lot of people are sloppy thinkers. They want everything done for them. You can give them all the answers, 
Matter of fact, you can give them an open book test and they'll still fail. Yeah, yeah. True. So they don't learn. Well, you have to you have to say they're learning at their own pace and eventually they will get it. We want them to get it when we want them to get it, and they're not ready to get it. Mm. So we have to say, you know what, it's okay that they're not getting it there, but I planted the seed for them to get it. Okay. So we have to wait patiently so we don't plant the seed and do what? Grow. Now. <laughs> grow now, grow now. Where are you? This is so simple. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, and it's also to teach us how to stay in love and how to be impatient, how not to judge, and then say, you know what? I can heal this person. I can heal this person. I can heal their mind. I can heal their mind because I've given them the answer, even though they aren't reacting to it or using it now, who's to say they're not going to use it later? My parents told me for years, don't do this, don't do this. And I did opposite it and it didn't work. And then finally, when I did what they said, 20 years later, then it worked. <laughs> okay. We told you. It was so simple. Yeah. I had to go experience it for myself because life is a great teacher. And people have to learn those lessons through life. Mm, okay. And it's but okay. that's the thing, right? We see, we see the timeline. You know, there's a timeline. And then if they don't get it done, they, they will lose, well, they, yeah, they will lose the opportunity, right? But then other opportunities will arise. I know, but it's going to be harder. But that's okay. It's their journey. Okay, all right. Okay. Don't, look at, don't look at their journey as hard, but look at their journey as an experience that they're drawing to themselves. Bless you. You have to remember, they're creating that. Some people want a hard journey. Some people have to learn hard lessons. <laughs> they really do. Some people... You tell them, don't put your hand in the fire, and then all of a sudden, ah, what happened? My hand hurt. Put his hand in the fire. So the words don't teach at that moment necessarily. They catch up later with what you're trying to express to them. And as long as you're expressing unconditional love to them, they're going to receive that more than anything that you could possibly say to answer that solution. Because they know at the end of the day, Lily cares for them. If not, you would ignore them. I feel like giving up. No, no, no. Think of it as a good experience that you call to yourself. So, so what should the attitude be? I mean, my attitude. I love this person right where they are, and they're going to get it eventually. Oh. I call this person into my experience to teach me what? Each time yeah. you with them, go back to the unconditional love training. When you see through their eyes, God creator, all you see is pure love. Mm. So if they get reflection of love from you, now, whatever problem they're in, they're going to see that love more because love never fails. So if you become the answer of love, which is always your answer, Lily stays in love because, because you're compassionate about them. That's why you're concerned about them. Yeah, but I was I was getting rather angry. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what that does? That you know what I'm glad you said that. That's a great teacher when we say body mind. When you feel anger, look at the emotional scale that you created. You created anger and experienced anger, and then was that person angry? No. Of course not. They didn't know you was angry. <laughs> what they they know that uh, I, I I was getting a bit fierce, mm -hmm. uh, no longer kind, mm -hmm. because I know what kind of games the kids are trying to do, right? Right. And there's the difference between being stern and disciplined, but then it's also. I can still stay in this loving place at the same time. 
You don't no. like to love with your children. No. <laughs> if you catch them, if they say no chewing gum in the classroom and they're chewing gum, right? Mm -hmm. They know the rules, but they come in there chewing gum. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Every time you have to say the rule is so simple, don't chew gum. Why is that so hard? Because they're free spirit. They're going to do what they want to do, and it's going to frustrate you. Mm -hmm. Now, out of that frustration, you have to learn within your body how to be in a place of neutrality. So you know what? And this is why I say the affirmation. I'm created as my father created me to be. I'm free. And nothing forces my experience but me in each moment. Mm -hmm. I, in other words, Lily brought anger to who? Herself. Mm -hmm. Even though that person expressed it or felt it, they still weren't moved to where your anger was. So the anger did anything, nothing. <laughs> well, it kind of scared the kids. But did the scare work? Don't know yet. I don't know yet. <laughs> okay, we'll come back to that one then. So if the scare worked, you don't want to scare them, but you want to put a firmness of these are the rules. And if you don't follow the rules, then we're going to expel you. Mm. Okay. First time's a probation, the second time's, the first time's a verbal warning, the second time's a written, the third time you're out of here. Yeah. You come back, you have to write us a 5,000 word essay on why you deserve to come back. That's fear. <laughs> mm, okay. Because anger means now every time you raise your voice, because that's the reaction you're respond wanting from them. And you don't want that. You don't want to always get angry to get a response from them. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Here's a yes. great example. I know a person who was learning what I'm teaching you all, and he would travel. And he went up to Seattle, Washington, and he was driving a car. And he stayed at the Marriott Hotel, and they had the underground parking, the layers. And I guess they had a convention going, and all the cars were there, and they were charging $50 a parking. Oh. So he lost it. He thought, this is outrageous, $50 for parking. So he went in, he complained to the, the ballet person, he complained to the cat, he complained to everybody, so they comped it. They comped him, right? He went to the next place, and guess what happened? Parking was $40. He has another adult tantrum and complains to the valet. He, now everybody's comping him, so now he's built up that if I have a tantrum, they're going to comp me, but he's not satisfied. Oh. So he continues to bring the same thing over and over and over, into his experience. Mm, okay. Finally, I said, can you find, I said, can you afford the $50? Well, yeah, pastor, that's not the point. But, okay, well, there's the problem right there. And I had to ask him, what was it about the $50 that angered you? Not that you couldn't afford it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He had to really meditate and go in and say, you know what? I was irrational. I could have paid the $50. Would have been a big deal. My company could have comped me back or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But once he changed that attitude, the next trip went around. It was the exact same thing. He had to pay the $50, but he wasn't angry. He went to the next place and they gave him free parking. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I went, I told you. He had to go through the experience for himself. Mm. Life is a great teacher. Mm. If you don't get it now, you might get it later. If you don't get it later, it's not meant for you to have at that moment. And it's okay. Mm. Okay. And here's another thing. In the spirit, bless them. When you leave their presence from anger, say, you know what? I'm, I'm, I forgive myself for being angry at another spirit. 
how can I approach this differently the next time? Or we won't have a next time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right? Mm. Thirdly, how often do you pray for all the students and bless them individually, not just academically? The personal lives. Bless their personal lives. Each individual bless their personal lives and watch what happens. Something as simple as whatever gifts you see in them or talent or whatever, bless it. I bless this person. Bless them. Watch what happens. Nothing. It will happen. <laughs> okay, can I just bless them as another spiritual being? Sure. Yeah. Yes. I see this. In love. Yeah. In love. What? That's the thing, right? Because um, maybe it's the intention that to, to make everybody to be better. So mm -hmm. we always have the confidence that anybody can be way better than what he is right now. Mm -hmm. There's always room for improvement. But there's just some people who are so not willing to improve. Right. Here's, here's another perception. Here's another idea. They're enrolled in your school, correct? Yes. Go from that fact that they've enrolled in your school and be happy in that place because they're still coming. And it might take some time, but it be happy because what if they weren't enrolled? Yeah. So look at the fact that at least this person is enrolled to come here to get love. Mm. Academics are going to come, but it's going to come according to how they want it. Yeah. I don't know math as well as I would like to, <laughs> but I get it in my own way. Mm. So go with the fact, and here's what it will do for you. It will help you look at that person, as you just said, another soul being. You'll look at it from that perspective as you know what, at least we draw them to us and they've enrolled in our school. That is a blessing. I'm, I'm appreciative and grateful from them and from that standpoint. They could have been anywhere else, but they chose to come here. We're thinking of firing these kids. If they don't do the work, they should go. Absolutely. Absolutely, because any place you go, if you don't do it academically, you can't stay anywhere, correct? Yeah. And you don't, here's the thing, don't look at it as a loss, look at it as a great experience that you met these people, another soul being, that you had to learn something, not about them per se, but about yourself. Yeah. And when yeah. the next person that is similar to them comes into the school, you know how to deal with them already. Here's mm -hmm. how you let know this type. Before they can come, you make them take a pretest to come in to qualify by the school standards. Correct. Yeah. That way, that's the process of elimination of whoever wants to be here is going to be here, and we're not just taking anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to qualify to get in the school. Mm. Okay. Not right. just free for all. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. Anything else? I'm all good. Um, anybody? Yes? No? All right. If not, on page 152, and thank you for that. I appreciate it. Oh, and if you have, if you have not noticed, as we begin to do this teaching on the uh, way of transformation, you're going to get a lot of exercises. There's a lot of exercises, if you notice when you read it, if you get a chance to read it, there's a lot of exercises that we put into it, and the exercises are with the meditations that you've practiced before and continue to practice. But what they do is they help you become the ascended masters and get the things that you're desiring. And not only the thing that you're desiring, but to awaken those who are still sleeping. Mm -hmm. so we give you a lot of drills, <laughs> a lot of exercises. Okay. And also if you can, Keep a journal. When you get those flashes that come to you from God, source, whatever you want to call it, higher self, take a journal and write it down. And you'd be surprised 
of the pattern you will see. Like for Anson, for instance, when Anson gave the testimony about the car, if you look at the week prior and then the week before, if he would have kept a journal, he could estimate from the time he asked to the time he received. And look, and he would he could go, and everybody actually can say, here's where I asked, here's step two, here's step three, here's step four. Mm -hmm. Within this week, or however long from June 20th to June 22nd. Okay. So we give you the exercises, but you don't have to, but I, I always keep a journal and I write everything down. And it amazes me when I go back and look at it and go, wow. Uh, but I'm also a bit worried that people read my journals. No, your own personal. He don't know what happened. Okay. Well, write only things that are, just write the things that you need to, keep the things you need to remember and write the things that are general. Uh, yeah, I did not share my deep thoughts. Oh, you keep them to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> well, nobody can understand your deep thoughts. If y'all knew my deep thoughts, y'all would run. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on page 152, your joy is found in extending your treasure. And a lot of that is just really what we, uh, what we talked about. Um, when we talk about extending the treasure, this person that you encountered that made you angry, that's what they put their value in, that treasure. So one of the questions we ask is, what is your treasure? Number two, how do you extend your treasure? Number three, what is the way of transformation? Four, what must I release to transform? And instead of an affirmation, we kind of give you an axiom, if you will, or questions. And as you think about these questions, see how you've done them before. Mm -hmm. First question is, how can I extend my treasure this day? We give you the answer. Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Unlimited recognition of my unlimited power, the, that which brings you joy and puts a smile on your countenance. Store up these things and all these things will be added to you. How can you add that which you're storing up in the heaven of my consciousness? The voice of love will guide you in your actions. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the treasure, yeah. we're talking about your what? What is your treasure? Your joy. Yeah. Your treasure is really what you put value in. So here's a good example. You got angry, that became the treasure, even though it was the right thing to do. Because you value the anger. Hmm. You see? This means that if your only treasure, your greatest joy will be discovered as you cultivate within yourself the habits of mind, the habit of body, the habit of choice that begin to align what you think, what you see, and what you do with the truth that is always, true always. For your joy will be found as you recognize that you exist to extend your treasure. Your joy will be found when you extend what? Your treasure. So we're always teaching you the, the mind creates from the vibration of your desire, okay? As you do so, you immediately add to your father's treasure whose only will is to extend that to which he is forever unbound, unlimited, and God is but love. The grand thing about love is this. It does not require any set of conditions to exist before it does. How is this different than some of the things you've experienced in life? As a body, there are certain conditions that must exist before the body can be sat saturated with food or water. There must be certain conditions that are met before the body stops shivering against the cold. Your world is based on a topsy-turvy perception that conditions must be met before there can be choice instead of war. The student had made a choice coming in. They made a choice coming in that they weren't going to follow the rules. Does that make sense? 
Yes. You had to go to what? War. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait, wait. In defense, in defense, I like to say now, now that I realize that I've been angry, so now I know what is it that I want to achieve. Okay. And okay. That's that will bring me satisfaction in, instead of anger. I get it. See, but that's a great lesson. Look what you learned about yourself from that person. I know. That's a great lesson to learn. Because the more you learn that, the more you're able to release that and be better on the next go around. It's a releasing of each thing. So now, the, each time you release those things, you, get, you don't get as angry. Because now wisdom says, I've experienced that. So now I know how to handle this differently. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Forgiveness instead of judgment, for love instead of fear. Therefore, you think, when the conditions outside of me change, then I'll make the choice for love. And a lot of people do that. Yes. The condition is to change first, and then I'll love you. But they, they, they can't do it from a place of anger. Because... <laughs> Can't serve two matches. I can't be angry and loving you at the same time. Hard to, it's hard to do. It's hard to do. Here's why. If you tell your children, don't do this, and you spank them out of love, do they want that love? No, that love hurts. So now what's his definition of love? But if you go, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. Mm -hmm. Different definition of love. Different circumstances. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. okay. I've often said that the world is merely the reflection of the insane choice to deny love and to be devoted to fear. The world is diametrically opposed to truth of the kingdom. The world is opposite of reality. The way of transformation rests on the complete reversal of the thought system you have learned in the world but that the thought system is not merely the practice of new ideas repeated and nauseam in the mind, that reversal of thought must permeate the entire field of the body-mind, which is nothing more than the field of your consciousness, so that you know that change has occurred. In other words, when you are transforming, you're transforming your mind first, but you're releasing all those negative emotions to hold you back. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. The way of transformation of the Christ conscience reminds you that thoughts turn into what? Thing, manifestation of that which you are desiring or not desiring. Everybody get that? Yeah. So anything that you're thinking about, mm -hmm. whether you like or you don't like, as long as you're thinking about it, it becomes things, right? Here's how fast it takes for one thought to have a conjoining thought similar to that thought. 16 seconds. So when a thought comes in and a person takes that thought and focuses upon that thought and worries about that thought or whatever, another thought similar to that thought is attached to that thought and now it's a chain reaction. Mm. Okay. So now so you feel it in their body, the vibration of that. Mm. So in my situation, I like say I don't like that kind of students. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and I have been dealing with it for about two, three days. Oh my God. Because look what you just said. I don't want, and then you got more of it. Yeah. Even though that's true that you don't want that, but look at what you focused upon. You keep pointing at it. So the more you point at it, the bigger it gets, the bigger it gets, the bigger it gets. Now that becomes the reality. That's a bad student. So now I can't love the bad student. I got to get rid of this jerk. <laughs> I to fire you now. But now what that does is it teaches you and learns you to say, you know what? Now we put in criteria in place to prevent these from coming. And I love those people that came because they taught me about myself. Mm -hmm. But I, cannot, I cannot say that, okay, I, I will, these are the students that, skip, you know, that are here and then 
Um, I would love that if they, they cooperate and do the work. Can yeah. I do that? <laughs> That's conditional, right? Conditional, right. <laughs> I, I will love you as long as you follow these criteria, but as soon as you don't, there's going to be a problem. There's going to be war. Okay. Right? All right. <clears throat> We would like you to think about thoughts turning into things because that's what's happening. That's how everything that you see in the leading edge has come about. There's a vibration that produced from the body mind. Think about when you got angry, you physically felt it in your body. Your body mm -hmm. tenses up. Mm -hmm. Your face is no longer smiling because it can't. <laughs> right? Yes. So you feel that. You feel that that pull tension in the body. And it doesn't feel good. No. It takes, and we'll call that energy. Look at that energy that was produced in the body. That you remember we say the CD disc is going? Uh-huh. You have that anger, there's a break, and that energy is, is chaotic. So now what it does is, first day, it gets more disc over here. Second day, I got a bad disc over here. Third day, I got the same disc. Why is this disc getting bigger? Look at the energy that is put out of that from the body. Okay? Okay. This vibrational evolution, just like the seed in the ground, at first is a seed and then a plant, and then it's plants bearing fruits or vegetables or something wonderful. There's a process of vibrational evolution and it's thoughts turning into things. Mm -hmm. Look how you have to play that out based on now I'm angry at you. So now I have to justify my anger towards you. And I'm gonna let you know how justified I am toward you. <laughs> yes, I, I, I was thinking you deserve it. <laughs> You came looking for me. <laughs> but you learn about yourself, which is great. And now you know how to deal with similar situations in the future. Mm. It, makes you, it makes you stronger, it makes you wiser, it makes you more loving and say, you know what? I could have handled it different, but I handled the way I handled it. And the next time this happens, hopefully not soon, hopefully not never, but if it does, I'm approach it this way. Okay. Because we put things in place to teach us. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm. Pay attention to your thinking and the process of creation. Those who are in alignment know they're in this, uh, this moment in alignment with their wholeness of who they are. When you're not in alignment, you don't feel good. Yes. You're not in alignment. You don't, you feel it. And you're not in this moment, not in alignment with their wholeness of who they really are. Mm -hmm. I am the father of one. I am as a creative being made in the image of God, willing to deliberately, consciously, and actively choose being responsible for which thoughts, which pebbles are dropped into my mind each moment. I have to take accountability of that anger. I chose and called anger into my experience. Mm. I am not what I have perceived myself to be. I am an unlimited pure spirit and nothing is unavailable to me. Therefore, in this moment, I choose to open access to other dimensions of the experience so that I might call this moment to me in a different way. Stand in your divine power, be the knowingness of who you are. So when you are in any set of circumstances, that one seemed to elicit judgment or fear or anger or hurt or sadness, you recognize, my goodness, my whole body feels different. I just feel like being loving. I feel totally safe. What's the big deal here? Oh, I remember when these kinds of circumstances would have elicited sadness or hurt or gear or anger, or it means fear or anger, and now I just think it's a beautiful place to be because here I can extend the love of Christ. Wow, what a joy. What a treasure. Thank God I have this moment in which I can be the blessing that blesses the world. 
No, I feel so bad. <laughs> no, 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 it's learning. It's learning. It took me two days. Oh, no, 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 it happened yesterday. It happened yesterday. It's okay. It's learning. It's all learning. What if the world, if not in each moment of relationship in which you find yourself, beloved friends, the use of this time is pivotal. The use of time determines at all levels what you experience in your tomorrows. Long after the body deceases to be the teaching and learning device that you are most attached to, long after the body dies, you will indeed be continually stepping into your tomorrows. For you are the sunbeam sent forth from the sun, from the mind of God, and that light never stops traveling to the spatial term. The only choice you ever have is this. Will I resume responsibility for doing whatever I must to do to eradicate every misperception, every obstacle of the presence of love, every limited belief I've ever learned about anyone or anything, especially about who? Myself. Myself. When will I choose to assume responsibility for cultivating that perfect remembrance that I and my father are one so that I can perceive the real world, the reality that shines through everything? That is the reality that is present in the very materials that makes up the, bot makes up the chair in which you're sitting. That reality literally pervades the body that you think is so dense and hard. Or perhaps if you've not been exercising, it also feels what? Soft. Some of us guys drink that beer, you get your beer belly, or you drink those bum bums and get fat or whatever. Who <laughs> is there's nothing that you see that is not pervaded by the perfect radiance of God's holy presence. Nothing. A stone, a leaf, a piece of paper by the wind, even the shouting of fear and anger from anyone yet contained within it. If you will receive it, the perfect love of God for your for your father does not ever recall the withdrawal from the unlimited and perfect extension of himself, and God is but love. If you did not find holy in that love in this moment, you would immediately cease to exist. I do not just mean die, I mean literally cease to exist. There would be no trace of thought or memory in any mind of you. It is only because of the love is that you are. This is why I once said, of myself, I can do nothing, but my Father through me does all things. I did not say I learned these things of my father, and now I will be the maker and doer. I acknowledge my complete helplessness, my complete dependency. I eradicated any perception that I was a self-separated from God. I stopped giving authority to the tiny little gnat shouting the vastness of space, my will be done. Everybody kind of get that? Hmm. Yes, no, maybe so? I know, yeah. As you sit in your chair in this moment, hopefully with your transformation journal in your lap and pen in your purchase for remembrance, you are wholly dependent at all times on the pervasive reality of love, which has given you existence out of his desire to extend this treasure joy. This is the reality of who you are in this moment. You are as that has arisen from the ocean of God's perfect and holy love. You cannot for a moment be cut off from it. Yes, tomorrow things will change. Yes, there will be a point when the body breaks down and dies. Yes, there will be a moment which all that you see before you will be there no longer. Mm -hmm. All the things that arise in time end in time. This is the way it is. Yet you are free to cultivate the ability to perceive the real world, to see, to know, to feel, to taste, to extend that which is real. Only love meets that definition. That. Questions, comments, concerns? So we have to start writing? You don't have to start writing, but remember I said keep a journal. When you get those flashes, that's you, that's you and God talking. I, I haven't had any flashes for a long time, for quite some time. I think ever since, no, I think it's about two years, two, three years. I haven't had that because I didn't ask. Ask for back. Okay. <laughs> Don't be afraid of it. It's your gift. Um, yeah. Well, many things had happened, you know, for the past two, three years. I think mm -hmm. Melissa had, had told you. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, I was I was also involved, you know. So I I stopped asking questions because I think it just complicates um, my thinking. But now you're learning something. Now you're learning new ways yeah. of thinking. This is why we always influence the exercise. And, and you don't have to have a journal. It's just a, it's just an it's just for your own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have one. Not a big deal. Mm. Not a big deal. What the journal does is help you with the exercise of remembering things like those and not saying, well, when I did keep a journal, somebody got in my journal, read all my personal business, tried to use it against me. <laughs> this, this is a different journal. This is going to be only a spiritual journey. Mm. When you get a revelation or that instinct or that impact or that gut feeling, whatever you want to call it, write it down. Write down the time, the date, the place, whatever that thought was. It doesn't matter if it was blue three times and you go, why am I hearing blue? <laughs> mm. or, the, or some people hear a song in their head and then they get in the car and they turn the radio on and that song comes on after the song. Yes. Something similar to that. When those things happen, then you write those things down. Mm. Okay. Spiritual journal. But it's not, it's not mandatory. It's just something that you can go back on and use the teaching that we give and use the journal and make a comparison and go, this is what I was feeling like. This is what I was experiencing. This is how you train the mind. Mm. That way... When life happens, we don't overreact to those things. Mm. We can approach them differently. And now with the unconditional love teaching, it helps solidify that. Mm. And I think that I, I probably don't need a journal because I'm very clear. Okay. Well, no, but yesterday I tried writing uh, mm -hmm. while using the meals, and um, I was pretty calm. That's your journal. Let that be your journal. Okay. Let that be your, that's a great journal. Because it does not involve anybody else except for yourself. Okay. And you, and you can only lie to yourself. <laughs> I know, I know. No, but I, I only write the fun things, you know, like, Funny, fun, ease, love. Right. And even write the things that don't make you feel good. No. Yes. Write no. those. Yes. I have to write those things because if I don't, then I I have to say, I have to address them. Oh. It made me feel this way. What was my thinking when I woke up to muse to have me feel this way? What why did I call that feeling into my experience? Mm. So I had to write that down. I and usually I, don't think too much about the, 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 the bad stuff because the answers will come later. Exactly. Like today you answered my problem, right? Thank you. That's a blessing. All Thank right. You. We all good? Any yes. other questions, comments, concerns? All right. The oh yeah, I already gave you the axiom, um, and then tomorrow we'll we'll continue with the other training. Okay. All right. All right. And, uh, I'm gonna put it on the YouTube. So subscribe to the YouTube and share it with everybody. That way we can go global. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Love you guys. You have a blessed week. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.